car, whose idea was this? Good morning. And you currently find me on a hill that I've ridden up quite a few times before, but uh, never on a bike weighing 27 kilos. I'm not sure why I chose to start the video on this hill, but it's good for the drama, I guess. Ah, oh, wrong gear. Oh. oh, great. And then just as we get to the top of the hill, wind. So if you've watched any of my videos, oh God, I cannot speak. Oh good, we're on a downhill section for a moment. Right, so if you've watched any of my videos over the last few weeks, you may well have guessed that I'm currently on my way to Birmingham to the NEC. We're currently five miles in to the 108 mile total journey. And I say we, because Chris has decided to join me for the first part of the ride. Hello, <laughs> I'm the support rider. <laughs> yeah, Chris has very kindly agreed to chaperone me for the first, I don't know what, 15, yeah. 20 miles. Make sure you leave the Hertfordshire boundary. <laughs> he wants to make sure I'm gone for good. He's gonna ride with me for about 15, 20 miles before turning back for home. And then I'm 88 miles on my own with, as I mentioned earlier, a 27 kilo bike. It's fair to say Chris has been getting up these hills a lot quicker than me on his Cannondale Super 6 Evo. With no weight, yeah, that weighs about seven kilos. I'm effectively carrying three extra bikes. Ooh. I think a lot of this video is me going to be shaking my head and puffing. Well, that was less than ideal. The last thing you want at the start of a 108 mile ride is soaking wet feet and even worse to fall off and get all of your clothes for the weekend wet. Can you imagine? I think I'd just give up and go home. Right, well, we're 12 miles in now. And honestly, it feels like most of this has been uphill. I've never noticed any of these tiny uphill gradients before but when you've got so much weight on the back of your bike oh boy do you feel it i haven't said there's been too many hills oh, i literally just hit another one. Oh well at least the weather's being nice today we've had the most minor of tiny drops of rain splatter on us but i'm hoping that that's all we get famous last words the weather forecast shows that it's going to be fairly sunny but windy unfortunately for the first part of this journey but it might get a little bit wet as I arrive into Birmingham. Oh well. At least I can jump in the shower shortly after that. I can see Chris way off in the distance at the top of this hill. Yeah, I'm not getting any comms today. Cheers mate, see you later. Right, well, 15 miles in, that's Chris gone. We supported me 15 miles. So the next 93, all me. Right, let's get it done. And I just have to say, what a legend Chris is for joining me on that first little bit of the ride. That is what cycling's all about. Going on adventures and having your mates along to support you. Legend. Cheers, Chris. Well, I can't get enough of this weather. 12 degrees, sunny, it's beautiful. I might even have to take the long sleeve jersey off in a minute. <laughs> 14 miles an hour, I'll take that. Right, first mechanical pit stop of the day because for the last couple of miles, I've noticed it getting increasingly difficult to unclip. And it turns out the left cleat is loose. So I'm gonna have to stop at some point and tighten that up. All right, let's find a lay-by. Well, luckily I noticed that the cleat was loose as I was going downhill and I had time to play around with it and didn't need to pedal. That could have been dangerous if I'd come to a stop and couldn't unclip. Right. Here we go, let's get this screwed up. Standing on one foot is not easy at the best of times, especially not in a crosswind. <laughs> and while I'm here, I might as well take the opportunity to uh, check the other one, just in case. No, that one's fine. <laughs> right, back on the road. in so that means it's time for the first snack and it comes in the shape of a tonics caramel bar 30 grams of carbs that'll do for now gotta keep yourself fueled on the bike i actually made myself a cheese and pickle sandwich to eat on this ride yeah i left it in the fridge this morning 
Oh well, I should have plenty of nutrition to get me through, fingers crossed. Okay, well Garmin's just told me I've got the second of three big climbs coming up. The first one wasn't too bad actually, it was just a bit of a, a long slow burn. Pretty much as soon as we started, it was only a couple of miles in. This one's only an average 4% gradient across the whole thing. And it's only half a mile long, so hopefully it won't be too difficult. It is starting to warm up now though. Definitely gonna have to take this jersey off at some point on this ride if it stays like this. Woo! Yeah, feeling a bit warm now. I'm gonna have to stop and take this jersey off. My Garmin is currently saying it's 17 degrees. This is unheard of. Right, back on the road again after a brief pause. And I'm glad I did take that jersey off because Garmin's now telling me it's 20 degrees. 20 degrees in March. I'm definitely not gonna complain though because although it's 20 degrees, there is a nice cool breeze blowing as well. So not too hot, not too cold. Absolutely perfect. And talking of nutrition as I was earlier, I'm now three hours in, so I think it's time for another bite. And this time I'm going for one of my Velo Forte energy chews. Now I should just say I'm not sponsored by Velo Forte, but I just really like their chews. All made with natural ingredients and they really don't give you dodgy guts the day after your ride. So let's get a couple of these down me. Right, so 40 miles in, three hours down. Yeah, this weight and wind is playing havoc with my average speed. I'm only averaging 12 miles an hour at the moment, which is not fast. Uh-oh, well, it was never gonna last long, but the clouds have rolled in, the sun's disappeared, and I've got the first few spots of rain. It's still quite warm, it's 15 degrees. So it's not too bad, but I think I'm about to get a little bit wet. I did bring the rain jacket, but I'm hoping it's only gonna be a little refreshing spritz, so I'm not gonna put it on. I might live to regret that decision. I'm gonna be honest though, I'm getting pretty bored of this wind now. It's been a constant either side or headwind since I started. Yeah, could do without it now. Right, I've changed my mind. The rain has suddenly got quite heavy. Jacket's going on. And actually, while I'm stopped, it's a good point to uh, refill the water bottles. I'm actually using these Sturka tablets, which, as I've said in a previous video, I know everyone and their mother is using these at the moment, but they get a good rap. So uh, a few of my friends use them and they say they never get cramp. And as you know from my previous videos, I tend to suffer quite a bit of cramp. So anything I can do to stop that happening, I will do. Right, well, having stopped to put the rain jacket on, I think the rain has now stopped. Oh, well, I'll leave the jacket on for a bit anyway, just in case it starts again, until I start to feel like a boil in the bag in this thing. Right, we're just a couple of miles down the road and it's gloriously sunny again. Ordinarily, I'd just leave the jacket on, but all this flapping around is not very aero. And seeing as I'm trying to keep the speed up today, yeah, it's coming off. Much better. Right, well, I'm just over halfway in now. 57 miles of 108 done. And I found myself on a beautifully quiet country road right through the middle of a forest. The Southie Forest, to be specific. Reminds me very much of Epping, but having done just over halfway now, I've just developed a slight niggling pain in the small of my back, which is, yeah, it's starting to get a bit annoying, if I'm honest. I keep needing to have to stretch it out. And I think that might be down to this bike fit being completely thrown out by the fork that I put on. Let me explain. So if you watched my video from last week, where I was preparing this bike for this bike packing trip, putting the panniers on, changing the suspension stem back to the original stem that I had on this bike, then you'll know that I changed out the heavy steel fork for a carbon fiber one. Now, when I bought the fork from AliExpress, it was listed as a 29er fork. And I thought, well, 29 inches is the same as 700C, which is what the wheels on this bike are. So that'll be fine. For some reason though, it seems to have a massive amount of clearance above the top of the tire and I really can't figure out why. Now I know officially a 29er is a mountain bike fork and if you were buying 
suspension forks, you would need that extra clearance because as the suspension kicks in and the top of the fork comes down, you don't want it to hit the top of the wheel. But uh, this is a rigid fork, <laughs> no suspension. Why does it need so much clearance? In any case, the unfortunate result of having so much clearance is that the front of the bike is a lot higher than it should be, or at least a lot higher than it was with the steel fork. That means that the handlebars and my saddle are sort of level with each other, whereas I usually prefer to have the saddle a bit higher up than the bars. That shifts your weight forward. It means more of your weight is on your hands, holding onto the bars. And yeah, I think the problem is that too much of my weight is being held back on the saddle now. Too much weight going through my saddle and therefore it's causing an ache in my back. <sighs> oh well, I'll take this fork off when I get home, but I've still got a good 48 miles to do. The things we do for adventures, eh? It is a shame though, because this bike is ordinarily incredibly comfortable, but right now, unfortunately, it's anything but. Well, those clouds on the horizon are just starting to look very thick and very heavy again, and I'm riding straight into them. So how long do we reckon before the next rain shower? Right, well, Garmin tells me that I'm on the third of the three big climbs for this route. Half a mile long, 31 meters of elevation, and an average gradient of 4%. Now I'm just gonna sit comfortably into this one because I'm not trying to break any KOMs today. <sighs> I'm two thirds of the way in now, 72 miles done. The wind, well the wind is still here unfortunately. There's nothing I can do about that. But because I'm a bit of a data nerd, I've just been looking at the stats for this ride so far on my Garmin. And it tells me I've climbed a total of 1,073 meters on this ride so far, over the 72 miles completed. This route has only got 1,112 meters of climbing across the whole thing. I've only got 30 meters of climbing left to do in the next 30 miles. How's that work? Not that I'm complaining. It sounds like the rest of this route should be pretty flat. And after some of the climbs I've been up today, yeah, that's pretty welcome. Going back to what I was saying earlier about preparing this bike for this ride. I may have completely knackered the fit by putting this ridiculously huge fork on. However, one thing I'm definitely glad I did was put these 32 millimeter slick tires on to replace the 43 mil knobbly ones. Now don't get me wrong, those 43 mil gravel kings are awesome over the rough stuff, but they are extremely draggy when you get them on the tarmac. These ones have rolled like an absolute dream and I dread to think how much worse this ride would have been had I left the novels on. <sighs> right, 81 miles in. 27 left to go, exactly three quarters of this ride done. Let's get this smashed out now. I'm ready as ever after a big ride for a nice warm shower and a cup of tea. And to be honest, despite the fact that it is still really sunny at the moment, the temperature has dropped. It's down to about 10 or 11 degrees now. So I think the long sleeve jersey might be about to go back on. Okay, well, uh, the rain started again. At this point, it's actually quite nice because I was getting very, very warm. So this is quite a nice refreshing spritz. It does look like fairly blue skies on the horizon. So uh, let's hope that I ride into a bit more sunshine in a minute though. Well, if anyone's watching from outside the UK, this is what we call a spring shower. Gloriously sunny and pouring with rain. The benefit of that is you do get some nice rainbows. It's not every day you see one of those. What is going on? Right, well, the rain has eased off a little bit now and there is actually even some sun in the sky on the horizon. Although to be honest, the damage has already been done. I am absolutely drenched. My feet are soaking wet, my bib shorts and legs are soaking, my hands are soaking and actually quite cold and my head as well. But my top is fairly dry. Sunset is in exactly an hour 
I think it's ambitious to say that I'm going to get there for that because I'm currently moving at 14 miles an hour and as I say there's 16 miles to go maybe 10 minutes after sunset okay but that is officially sunset and I am five miles off oh boy these hills I don't know why Kamut told me that this was only 1100 meters of climbing because I'm currently at 1500 meters so Clearly it lied somewhere along the way. But yeah, I'm at 103, just over 103 miles now. Five miles to go. Oh boy, let's get that done in 20 minutes, shall we? And apologies for uh, sort of jetpacking the last 20 to 30 miles. But as I say, it was hard going and I just wanted to get those miles done. Oh boy, I'm ready for this to be done now. Well, I've made it <laughs> and it only took nine hours and 19 minutes <laughs> oh, and you can, I don't know if you can see I'm actually now completely covered in dirt because about two miles ago went through a massive muddy puddle that splattered all over me but I'm here and I'm now gonna go in get a nice hot shower nice cup of tea and then probably go and get a proper meal not an energy chew or uh, a chocolate bar. So in closing, would I do this again? Yeah, probably, but I probably wouldn't put such a time constraint on myself next time because I was aiming to get up here for about four o'clock this afternoon and it is now 6.38. <laughs> I'm only two hours 40 late. Oh well, I made it 108 miles, nine hours, 20 minutes. Think of the adventure, eh? That's what it's all about. So I think I'm probably gonna leave it there, but uh, let me know in the comments if you are mental enough to try something like this with 27 kilos packed on the back of your bag. Yeah, I'll respond as and when I've had a decent sleep. <laughs> as ever guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Oh.